The Civil War was a time of tremendous change for, for American women, particularly in the South. In the decades before the war, Americans had uh, a shared ideal vision of what women should be, which was moral and religious, and they were, in, they were supposed to pass these values on to their children. It was believed that any public involvement would taint them, so they were encouraged not to work, not to speak in public, not even to develop any, any political opinions of their own. Now, this was obviously an ideal that not every woman could, could adhere to. Um, up north, you have lots of poorer women who are working in factories, and down south, you have poor whites and slave women who are working in the fields. Um, but it was a very strong ideal. But the war changed all of this. Uh, with husbands and fathers away from home, women have to fill in for their roles as well as fill in uh, for all of these additional wartime activities which, which were required to continue the Confederate war effort. Now, a few women did uh, take a very obvious stance as far as, as disguising themselves as men and enlisting in the army. Um, this was only possibly a few hundred women at most. Um, but most, most Confederate women made important contributions in a variety of ways. At the outbreak of war, many women made presentation flags, which they would give to, to military units either from their area or who were passing through their area. During the war, many women also served as nurses for the Confederate Army, either temporarily when there was a battle near their home um, or for, as, as a more permanent vocation where they would actually travel with, with the Army or at a, at a particular established hospital. They would do everything from nursing the soldiers to cooking for them and, and doing their laundry. There were a lot of slave and free black women who were employed in these positions, but also a lot of white women, some of whom were in a position to volunteer their services, but others who were actually receiving pay. They endured grisly and filthy conditions um, in order to provide sustenance and, um, and comfort for the soldiers. Women also worked in various government offices, such as in the Confederate Treasury, where they signed notes. They also worked in the post office, sorting letters. Poorer women also worked in factories many times, uh, where they would be making things such as munitions, uh, friction primers, bullets, that sort of thing, um, for which they were considered particularly fit because of their delicate and small fingers. Soldiers' Relief Associations or Soldiers' Aid Societies uh, sprung up all over the South, uh, scores, probably hundreds of them all told, uh, almost always uh, led by women with the assistance of men, particularly uh, financial assistance, fundraising efforts, but also enterprises to collect, uh, make and collect socks, pants, uh, clothing of all sorts, blankets and even quilts uh, to be sent to the soldiers and oftentimes as well to be sent to the hospitals or to get food for uh, hospitals. We have the papers in our collection of about seven or eight Soldiers' Aid Societies in Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, I believe. Uh, perhaps the best is that of the Black Oak Soldiers' Aid Society, which was in what is now North Charleston, St. John's Parish, in a minute book that shows the the contributions and the expenditures and the work that the uh, association did for the four years of the war, mostly in the form of, uh, of sending clothing to South Carolina troops serving in Virginia and sending, raising money in for and sending provisions to men in local hospitals. The First Ladies Gunboat Society was formed in Charleston and they raised money to build one of the ironclads down there. Later in Richmond, uh, society was formed by the wife of a judge here in Richmond named Judge Clopton, and uh, she helped raise money to build the CSS Fredericksburg. Resolved that we as the weaker sex, being unable actively to join in the defense of our country, will encourage the hearts and strengthen the hands of our husbands, brothers, fathers, and friends by all measures within our power. There were numerous women working as spies, even young girls did it from time to time. Probably the most famous was the Confederate Rose, Rose O'Neill Greenow, who in 1861 transmitted the information to the Confederate Army that the Union Army had been given its orders to march on them at Manassas. The right man has turned up for the duty we spoke of the other day. Very truly, your friend, Rose O'Neill Greenhow. 
Many of these changes were temporary. After the war, when men come back to the home front, they take back um, their old jobs. And of course, many of those jobs which had been specially created by the war were no longer available. So many women ended up losing a lot of those, those gains and going back to their old, old positions back in the home. Um, not, now, this was not always the case, especially in professions such as nursing. They were forever transformed, and women uh, have traditionally been considered nursing figures ever since then. Um, and it also set the stage for future changes in, in, in notions of women's work, and um, some historians have argued that it could have led to, um, to later waves of, of, of feminist movements.